Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can calculate the annual percentage rate or APR in Excel. So you can do this calculation manually and there's a complicated formula you can find online as to how to do this, but in Excel you have the benefit of utilizing some functions that make make your life a whole lot easier and can, can do this for you. All you need to do is enter your, your inputs, your, your loan value, your interest rate, payment amount, and Excel can spit that out for you. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that in here. So let's start just with a basic example where we've got a loan amount of $200,000 and it's rate of 4% over 10 years and how we'll enter that into Excel. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up my variables just so it's easier to make any changes. So I'm gonna start with entering a, a variable for the interest rate, let's say number of periods, then let's put the present value, which is also going to be the, the loan balance. And then we're also going to need a payment amount, which in most cases is just going to be on a monthly basis. So for starters, let's say the interest rate is 4% per year. And the number of periods is going to be over 10 years. But because our payments are going to be a monthly basis, we need to convert this into um a number of months so 10 years times 12 months is going to be 120 periods and then i need the present value which is the loan amount so i'm going to say two hundred thousand dollars and then the payment amount now this amount i'm going to need to calculate because unless you've already calculated that part up but what you can do is use the payment function, PMT, in Excel, and enter in your variables. So let's say we want the interest rate. Again, because we're looking at a monthly payment, we want to convert this into a monthly interest rate. So we take that, divide it by 12. The number of periods is going to be 120. And the present value is going to be a negative 200,000. It's a negative 200,000 because that's what we owe. So we're in the negative, we need to pay it down. And then this future value is going to eventually be zero. So I don't need to enter that part. Close this out. And so Excel tells me that my monthly payment needs to be $2,024.90. Now, if I want to calculate the APR, and what APR really does is tell you the, the true cost on a percentage base uh, what you're paying on this loan. Now, in this case, I di did not include any finance charges, so the interest rate and the APR should be identical just because there's nothing additional uh, to be factoring in. But I'll show you how to calculate it anyway. So we use the rate function, and for the number of periods, again, we're specifying 120. For the payment amount, we've got that. The present value, again, let's put in a negative 200,000. I don't need to put an interest rate because obviously that's what I'm solving for. So I close this out, we got 0.33. Now that's on a monthly basis. So I actually need to convert this back by multiplying it by 12. That gives me 4%. So that's that's an easy way to confirm that there's, there's nothing extra on here. Now, let's say I wanna calculate this with some, some finance charges in here. So what I'm gonna do is copy this and just paste it over here. So I still got my same calculations on here. 4% number of periods, present value. Uh, the payment amount is going to change because what I'm going to do is add some financing charge, financing charges here. So let's say $30,000 is going to be my finance charge. So with that being the case, I need to update my payment because obviously I'm going to need to pay more than just $200,000 off. So I'm open parentheses here and add this $30,000 onto the 200,000, so that way my, my loan amount is now 230,000. So now my payment amount jumps up to $2,328.64. And the APR calculation here automatically updates to 7.06%. So it's a big difference from the 4%. And the reason being is just these finance charges because now we're having to pay that off. And so how the rate function works is looking at the number of periods, and how much we have to pay down. It's still using this $200,000 as the present value because you know, if you think about it, you're paying this this much per month, but you're still only getting that $200,000. So this 30,000 is sort of an extra that you know needs to be factored in, but that's not money you're receiving. That's mo that's an additional 
outflow that you need to pay. And so that's real, really that difference between the, the interest rate and the APR. In this case, you had the interest rate and the APR being identical because there weren't any finance charges. Here you've got a significant difference. And it all comes back to the finance charges. You know, if we drop a zero here and the finance charge is only $3,000, then you're talking about 4.32 versus 4%. You know, if we went up to as high as $50,000, then the APR is 8.9%. So you can quickly see how, how those finance charges can significantly impact that APR percentage. Now, one last thing I'll do here is I'll break this down into an amortization table so you can see exactly um, how these payments, how these payments pay off, get paid off over time. These balances do. So we've got. You need to specify the number, the payment number. Payment number. We need a beginning balance for our our loan, a principal, a principal payment, an interest expense, and let's say an ending balance as well. And so what I'm going to do now is fill in this amortization table. So starting with payment number one, the beginning balance is going to be that $200,000. The interest expense is going to be this beginning balance times by four divided by 12 periods. So just to make this a bit cleaner, put this in parentheses, freeze that interest rate. And then the difference that gets applied to the principal is going to be this payment amount. Let's freeze that and deduct the interest expense. So that's the amount that's going to get applied to the principal. So for the ending balance, it's going to be the beginning less the principal payment. And then for payment number two, the beginning balance is going to be equal to the ending balance from the last period. And then what I can do is just copy these formulas down. And now I can take this and copy this all the way down until I get to payment number 120. So you've got that zero balance in there. And now I can copy this over for the other calculation just to sort of um, compare the two. So we've got a payment amount, our principal. I just need to update these variables a bit. So the present value plus the finance charge is what needs to be paid off. The principal payment is going to be looking at the updated payment amount. The interest expense is still going to be 4%, but I'll move it over for sake of being consistent. And now what I'll do is copy these formulas down again. And there we go. So it's still paid off by period 120, but you can see the big difference is because we're starting with this larger ending balance there's a larger starting balance we have a lot more of those initial payments going towards interest so if you wanted to see how much more you're paying in interest as a result of this now if i just go down to let's say oh well, 500 that's fifty three thousand dollars versus forty three thousand dollars so though those additional costs from having that extra balance on your loan and that's really why that apr number is so much higher because you have to pay off more more money to get the same amount of uh, the same loan amount. So if you see that big difference between the APR percent and the, the stated interest rate, that's that's effectively why because you've got uh, a lot more that you're taking on in finance charges. So that's how you can calculate the APR in Excel. Hope you found it useful. And as you can see, it can be a big time saver as opposed to doing this manually. Uh, by yourself.